All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tamba. Welcome to our Ghana repatriation uh, conference call for the uh, Jihadi Initiative in the Central Region. Today is September 29th, and uh, we have a conference call. Duration set uh, for 7:15 to 8:15 to 8:30. Um, good one plus hour conference where we just go over all of the initial energy of this uh, new community project overview. And to get us right to the point, I'm going to go through the, um, the overview that was sent to everyone via email. It's an attachment. It's, a, it's called Draft Overview for Ghana Repatriation Community Initiative in Jihadzi. And it's a PDF form or a PDF file. Right. So those who are on the call and maybe not part of our group, if you, you know, you'll see my email if you're, you know, you're joining the call. Just uh, send an email and I'll get that document uh, to you. You can check out. Uh, it's something I'm just looking to get feedback from as best as possible for those who are interested. Uh, nothing is like concrete or finalized. Uh, so that email address is afta2010 at msn.com. And so what we have is a list of focus uh, content for the community. Number one is our repatriation community jihadzi overview. Two, location and GPS coordinates. Three, prime objectives. Four, business opportunities. Five, building and buying homes. Uh, six, land and administrative costs. Seven, getting started. Background check, requirements and payment. Eight, cancellation and refund. Nine, membership rules. And ten, code of conduct. All right, so those are the details. So let me give everybody an update on the project. Uh, so right now, we have a um, real estate lawyer uh, that is going to get uh, the landowner to basically just, he's going to do a survey of 10 to 20 acres or just a survey of 20 acres. So he's been paid to get that done. Um, he's going to get the documents that's needed from the landowner also. And he's going to do the land search on the actual portion of land we're getting. So all three of those things are being worked on and everything. So. All the money to get that started, including the deposit for the land, has been sent. Uh, so everyone that's the consultants that needed to go check the land out and do certain things, they're also paid. So it's one of those things where you know there's nothing moves, you know, without you pushing the money. Uh, so that is the best update I can give. That that is organized and taken care of. Uh, we have a few of us in certain committees and things like that. And once we get things going a little bit more and get a few assessments and a few energy from a few other people, then we'll add people into our communication on billing, you know, all the details based on what I just saw went through the list of 1 to 10, and we're going to go more in detail on it um, once I just finish the uh, update. And so the main thing about this is I want everyone to understand that we're going um, we're going to have to have everybody sign the bylaws and the, the overview, uh, which because it includes the refund and cancellation policy. And that would have to just be a part of it because, you know, th this stuff is difficult. And the last you need is people that are just, you know, people that are going to be problematic. Um, and I'm always telling people that the reason why people have issues with, when it comes to these things is because they refuse to read the details and refuse to be clear on it, and they assume certain things. You know, so it's a situation where we don't want anyone to be a part of this community energy unless you're going to be an accountable person and be a person that's willing to commit some of your time and energy to build this. And also, uh, there's emails and things that will be sent, and we may need people to do certain things. Uh, so it's one of those situations, all hands on deck. And if anyone that's not with that, that's fine. Now, the reason why we're going over all of this is so everyone could be clear and you can make a decision to be with this energy or not. And we literally just only want people who are 100% clear. And also another thing that, you know, we're even going to talk about is just the, the background check that you have to do for, you know, you have to nationwide background check that you have to go get and then submit. So there's, a, there's certain things that people are going to have to do, and I'm not sure if some people are going to be up to it. Uh, but it's a situation where everything is being built from the ground up. So li like this is like, you know, literally like, like you know, you're going to say the first stage of everything that we just talked about. Uh, so in order to build the other stages, it's going to, take, you know, we collect administrative costs as a way of 
paying for all the things that need to be paid for. Because I tell people I can't use my money to pay for all the things that we've been trying to do as a group. Lawyers need to be paid, consultants, uh, you know, processes need to be paid for. And it's just like a ridiculous amount of things that has to be done. So the only thing that we can really do is just try to get people email updates or, or send a message on you know, Facebook or group chat and say, hey, an important email was sent uh, for you to be clear on what's going on. Uh, so we're going to go to a, 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 you know, a few weeks process of where all these documents are going to be out, and it's up to us to be clear on you know, that. You know, and you know, a lot of times people don't want to do some of these things because they feel like people throw them on the bus when things go wrong, and you know, like you know, no one wants to deal with people who you know don't want to take accountability and just throw someone under the bus because of them, their lack of wanting to be accountable. You know, so this is not a situation where we look. We need to be pointing fingers at each other. We all need to be responsible. To, you know, if if we get some land paper back, and we all have to look at it. Don't say, oh, but money was your responsibility to make sure this was this and this. No, it's like it's our responsibility because then we start doing that. Then you know, then it's it's a, it's, it's a coward way of just not being accountable. You know, so literally, we're gonna go to this like baby stages of many things, um, and and like I talked about, gotten to the point where people are gonna have to sign documents, even with traveling with me. But one of the things I want everyone to understand, when we do any of these, whether it's tours or or projects, the administrative costs or deposit is non-refundable, and those costs are usually three to five hundred dollars. Uh, and ultimately, it's the same. It, that's when you use the term um, when you use the term administrative cost. You're just saying that this is for a certain level of the work, and then you have another cost for the land. So those are the two costs we have, and then we have costs that we're not responsible for. You have to do so. It may be for you to do certain, you know, and that's why I need to get some get the final clarity of the prices of things that has to all get done, because everyone will be responsible. And have the access to register their own land with your own name from your passport on there as your own legal entity, and that was the biggest thing that uh, was able to create opportunity for. And people will be able to build the different homes. We just organize a community layout layout to where people who want apartments and want condos, and then people who want multi multi unit homes, and then people who want one floor, two floor, and then people who want mansions or whatever big or more or extra plot. The goal is just to try to make it work for the multitude of us. Uh, and if people are committed and willing to do it and they just want you to accommodate them for certain things, I don't see why not. You know, uh, That's what I personally just do all day long. Um, and I do it well with the tour business that we have, literally just sitting, literally just working throughout the week accommodating people. People want to change tours. People want to, people call it some complex stuff situation. But it's the nature of that business where you're doing your best to make sure you take care of the people that are invested in what we're working together with. So I want everyone to understand that we have any issues with each other. It's between us and not between us on YouTube or us doing other stuff, or us doing ridiculous stuff. You know, if we can't come together and talk as people and work things out, we're, we're never going to survive the, the level of enemies and wicked people that we have out there that's been playing this game of world domination for a long time, longer than you know, longer than us, um, and you know, so um, it's one of the situations where if anyone is going to be disturbing, this be this bringing disturbing energies, please just go somewhere else, and we're literally not accepting no more money from anyone unless we go through that full process I talk about signing documents, stuff, you know, to the point where we literally have to just get a few lawyers to be on our side over here in America that's vested to make sure we're good because unfortunately when you're trying to build anything, you all you know, we all know it already. It's you know, folks which for whatever reason, from jealousy to hatred to whatever, to frustration or to maybe maybe they feel like we're building something and they, they you know, they can't be a part of it and they feel like they need to do what they need to do. But I also tell people that I'm a strong, tough person and I'm gonna stand up for myself and I'm gonna always stand up for this movement of energy of repatriation, us reconnecting the building in Africa. Because I feel literally it's a solution to solve our long-term problem in America. You know, we have done as best to try to survive here in a short term. This energy and um, like the Pan-African Village in Cape Coast uh, that's being organized by some wonderful people I know. Um, you know, you know, these are energies from from your own brothers and sisters that are here, 
and we're, we are working together to try to make sure we deliver something concrete for everyone. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to read just the initial overview, and then I'm going to open up, go to a few more things and open up for some questions. That way we don't make this a lengthy thing, because I'm expecting everyone to have read through it already. The Ghana Repatriation Community Initiative in Jahadzi is a 10 to 50 acres proposed project in the central region of Ghana. Now, the initial agreement is to get us 20 acres, and the lawyers working at the MOU where we're paying on 10, but we have the same option for the same price for the next 10. But after that, the price is going to change, and you know, you know how it is when you know when more and more people come, the prices go up. So, but the initial price of what we've been offered is, is a decent price for the for the direct cost of the land for the first 20 acres, uh, it's uh, 1,500 for a plot of land. So a little bit more than what Garvitan had, but you have your freedom to do all the things you want to do. And then community laws and rules are being put together by us. So it's something that you know all of us would have to agree with. And so at this uh, foundation of this vision is a group of uh, committed Africans from the diaspora with strong pan-African energy who wish to build a practical example of our reconnection to the land of our ancestors. Our community vision is also to search for redemption of our stolen African ancestors for those who lost their lives and those who survived the African Holocaust during the transatlantic European slave trade. Africans can live in an African environment or retreat to for a period of time. So we want people to be able to come to the community, connect, do business. There's a full person that's just living in the community. You know, we want to just be able to connect with other people. That way we can use our resources together. It's like you know, the goal is to definitely connect with the Pan-African Village and many other that's what communities that are coming up so we can just operate as a united front. Like I, and like I mentioned again, it didn't make no sense for us as a people not to be able to get along on this level, especially those of us that are more African-centered, conscious, and clear about what needs to be done. So, you know, we're just taking the, 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 the lead and in, in leading forward with good examples and just try to just build something that's respectable. So our mission is to provide our community with advanced strategies to satisfy today's demands in the areas of living, doing business, and investing in Africa. Uh, we're Africans who possess a wide range of skills and training who are coming together to create a new kind of living experience on the land of our ancestors. So. You have so many of us that I've talked to from all different kind of incredible background. And that's one of the things when you live in America and if you've been just out there doing things, you'd have gained this a ridiculous amount of knowledge from, you know, from, you know, from university, military, technical school, the different jobs uh, a lot of us work, the different business some of us start, uh, initiatives and, 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 and organizations, you know, different um, members of us uh, you know, have been a part of. So that is like a wealth of power and we have a great momentum in Ghana to keep, you know, to, to make that work to where we can literally help the rest of us who want to make this move. Like some of us have a, a whole lot of great resources but may not necessarily have certain other things, uh, the capital and things to, you know, to, to move and do certain things. And by us being established, we can change the game on a lot of those things because ideally what you want to do is reverse the brain drain, drain and reversing the brain drain is basically this all the stolen geniuses that was taken from the continent and brought to the diaspora. Now, you know, a small percentage of that energy is returning to do something special. So we see Africa as the only viable option for the future survival of African people. I just can't look at it any other way because it's like all the details point there. So this position is also supported by it the world's dependency on the natural resources in Africa, which are currently being controlled by non-Africans, the treatment of Africans outside of Africa, and lastly, by the call that Mother Africa has made to all her displaced children in the diaspora to come home. Right, uh, so as I talk about the uh, brain drain, um, our method is to connect the skills and resources the African diaspora with projects, investment, opportunities, and like-minded brothers and sisters on the African continent. This community offers you the ability to custom build, buy, rent, or lease homes in Ghana. You can visit uh, or stay for some time in our community before you commit yourself to this important investment decision. So this is vital to ensure you know what you're committing to. 
so the goal is to build a level of the community energy where you know when we have groups of people that travel with us to Ghana, we can just go, go there and spend a good amount of time, check it out, and get and get a good feel of it. And then once we keep on building it and keep on opening these opportunities, and more people can come check it out and get a feel for it. But you know, the goal is to build something that's gonna stand the test of time and something that's gonna really represent us and represent um, the unique uh, resources that we have once we put our energy together. So this corporate economics at its finest um, once we get to the execution part. We will offer a rite of passage uh, for those who wish to integrate into the Ghanaian society. So it's one of those things where they're trying to get us to connect as best as possible. And even the tours that we do is a great introduction for Ghana itself. So we always say to people that if you're going to be interested in a project like that, it's ideal if you've been to the country before or you're going to the country. Uh, that way, you you know you're clear on certain things. Uh, so it's one of those situations where you don't have to you know have gone to Ghana before, but we also have to caution you that you need to be clear about the country you're dealing with. And you know, the things that we do, even in tourism, this the roots, culture, history, and you know, these are things that you know we look into this basically get our folks this clear and and, and connected to the you know fully connected to the culture. All right, so I talk about a few more. So I'll just um, I'm going to end this part on the overview, and then move to the next thing. Now, to uh, location and GPS coordinates. Now, th this community is is right by a nice, clean beach, uh, and it's a two-mile beach access. So it's not on the beach, but you have you can you can access the beach by our consultant, uh, Kwab Nabaka, explained to me about seven minutes because they timed it from the property. So you know, looking at um, you know five to ten minutes, and then so and that's uh, also a nice walk. Two miles is a good you know a good walk, and it's also two miles away from the the next uh, the next major city is Winneba, you know, because you have Accra, Winneba, Cape Coast, and Winneba is kind of in the situation where it's an hour and a half, two hours away from either cities based on traffic. Uh, but also the community is three miles away from the Accra Winneba Road, so it gives you good access to go to the right, to go to um, Accra, or go to the left to Winneba and Cape Coast. What what I have on here is uh, the, the GPS coordinates um, and also the actual GPS link. So until we get a site map, we have to just use these uh, coordinates and use this link for now because it puts us the closest to the actual community area. But uh, when you're doing you know, the survey and all those things, the goal is to get those exact things. So as you build this overview, we'll eventually just change over the things, change over certain information like this once we get it all finalized. And even the name of the community that we're going to be working on, voting on for the next few days, um, which I want to invite everyone to participate. That way we can have you know, some, we can see, you know, we can see some difference in the numbers and see which names of people are more like, you know, feel that fits what we're doing because most of everybody that's on this call is people that been, you know, we've been talking about this for a while and, you know, and your input would be greatly appreciated. So whenever we do get the uh, voting emails out and everything, uh, just please just click on it and just knock it out real quick because uh, it's something that we need to get done in the next few days and literally need to get it done by Monday morning because the lawyer needed to move forward with some paperwork for us, but lengthy process on everything. So uh, we're still doing good. So once we finish, whether it's a Monday or a Tuesday, um, we'll move forward. But we need to at least get the lawyer the name of the, our community based on our vote and our interests as, as a the general group uh, by at least Wednesday morning. So hopefully by Tuesday night we have it sealed up. So it's a situation where we're not going to have it out for three, four, five days or longer. Just literally, you have 24 to 48 hours. And for those who don't vote or, or give any input, it's the situation. What it is, you just miss out, and you have to go to flow. Just like if you didn't send any edits or didn't see that anything was wrong with what we're building, and you just agree with it, you just have to go to flow of it. And once again, we're just saying to everyone to be accountable. Also, have another link on the locations and GPS coordinates. It's uh, click on link um, to view videos of land and beach a few miles away from the land. So this is on our uh, Facebook group page, Ghana Repatriation Initiative. 
Uh, once you click on videos or photos, you'll see you know, the videos and photos of the, the land itself. And the goal is just to keep on adding to that to where it's a multitude of information because we're literally building information from the ground up. So we go over a few prime objectives and uh, we're open for some uh, questions. All right, so a prime objective is to develop and maintain a sustainable repatriation slash pan-African community. The aim of the project is to reintegrate Africans from the rest of the world back into the continent Africa, back into the continental African society through a process of rites of passage, re-education, relocation, and providing opportunities to just come visit for a while. We plan to provide as much benefits to local community through partnership of diaspora Africans and local Africans working together for the betterment of all involved. So it's an energy where we're not looking to isolate ourselves. And um, there are a few people from Ghana in the group of folks. It's a diaspora project, so it means those who live outside of the continent, not necessarily born outside of the continent. We have Ghanaian, Nigerians, and other um, Africans who have been here for 20, 30 years and so, and maybe they feel more connected to black American energy or society. Some people be perfect for this community. It's not a whole bunch of land, so you know, we can't fit thousands of people. You know, so this is something that's literally going to be for anywhere from 120 to 200 people. And you could just look at it as 10 acres, four plots, 40 plots right there. Um, and you know, so initial 20 acres is 80 plots, plus we may need to just remove 10 plots to do community center and do a few, you know, a few things, basic medical center. All right, um, one of the big things that for clarity, and this is not personal to anyone who, you know, who this doesn't accommodate, you know, uh, once again, we can please or accommodate everyone. It's a small project and it's very focused. So unfortunately, our straight black power African nation building energy cannot accommodate all this community does not accept any non-black African people, and uh, we're also looking to preserve the black African family and cannot accept any non-straight personnel on the property either. This project community is for righteous black African people living in the diaspora and want to be a part of a community with like-minded individuals. This project is also open to Ghanaians, like I talk about, or other African nationals living in the diaspora and want to be a part of our group repatriation energy. Uh, no homosexuals, no sex offenders, no pedophilia, no psychotic uh, criminal offenders, etc. All violators will be removed from the community slash project immediately. To help with maintaining safety and security, we are asking every applicant to submit a national oh, criminal background check before applications can be approved. None of these things are meant to offend anyone. We are building a community with values that works for us. If our values and vision does not work for you, please find what you're looking for elsewhere. And on that note, I'm going to stop right there, open up for some questions based on what I've talked about. And I'm literally on, on page three of this document, and the next thing that I had on the list was 10 to 50 acres of land available for residential and commercial, uh, So, which we kind of talked about in other things. All right, so family, it is star six to unmute yourself. All right, and family, uh, for those who are online, the screen is being shared, so as I go through the, the full document, we'll scroll down. All right, can you repeat your name again? Uh, this is Charles Bomani from Newark, New Jersey. Uh, greetings, Brother Charles. I'll guide with your questions. Yes, uh, Bomani, I uh, understand you got the land and everything, but uh, when we start building, who will be responsible for construction? Yes, uh, the construction builders would be uh, some of the people that we had uh, for the last project. Um, one of the gentlemen name is uh, Kwesi Prempe, and uh, we're going to reach out to a good brother from Migrating Culture, uh, which I've been talking with for, you know, since uh, 06. Um, and he does great dome homes and other homes. So, but we do have people that's, that's available. We just need to be clear on what people want because we don't have a set list of homes and things like that unless someone is willing to do the work to help to organize that. Other than that, um, it's a pretty open project. The only thing we're doing is we're section, making everything organized in a section where you don't have a dome house, a small dome house and somebody have a mansion by you. Uh, but, you know, 
So the site map and things like that has to be uh, organized also. But you know, we have plenty of folks, and if anyone in our group are, are, are home builders, the, the better. Yeah, that sounds okay to me. But for instance, like um, if if someone like was short of finances, are we able to um, pay as we go along with the builders? That's absolutely an agreement that uh, can be worked out, and the builder has to sign off on that agreement, and they have to work those things out. Sure, sure, so, sure, sure. Because sometimes the money can get a little bit tight, you know, when you're doing a construction project, you know. So I was thinking, well. You know, we could start, you know, paying the builder in the beginning or even put down a deposit and pay as we go along until the project's completed, if that would be acceptable. That's a great idea. And what I'm doing, I'm taking a whole lot of notes based on what people have been you know, sharing because, you know, everybody got great ideas. And literally putting that in perspective, we're making this flexible, organized, and directly to accommodate us uh, that – really want to do this because we all understand we have to make sacrifices, but I think the most important thing, honestly, we just have to make sure people are accommodated. So all of us are giving up a lot. We're giving up our beautiful luxury life in America. I'm just joking about that, but um, you know, <laughs> a lot of us are giving up you know, certain things, and, and regardless of how we feel about America, it's some level of comfort in certain things. Like, you know, people like myself and here, and it's like you do well for yourself here, and, you know, but you realize that we must build something in the future. Like, I think that's one of the biggest things that some of us with certain financial resources get complacent of being here. And, you know, but this is ideal for all of us. We just get, we just get organized little by little. Yeah, that, that sounds great to me, Bamani, because, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like how we do it in the Caribbean when we're building a project. You know, we kind of start with a deposit and we pay the, contractor as we go along, you know. So I'm kind of used to that format from, from back home in the Caribbean. So. Yo, man, that's the only way it work, man. My uncles, yeah. they make, that's how they build everything in, in, our, in our family property. Yeah. Now. A situation where we're just trying to get it to where you can build something, you know, build it within five years and livable. And if you just start at, you know, the second, you know, if you just start little by little within those five years, you'll be good to go. Uh, so a lot of yeah. things need to be ironed out and, and clear. Uh, so we're going to go through this process of having these conversations and adjusting this document so it fits with clarity. That way, yeah. anyone who read this, it, they'll only have like a few questions. Yes, because I was even thinking, Bamani, because we're not citizens there, we might not be able to secure loans from the bank. And furthermore, I don't really want to borrow any money for my bill anyway. I want to pay as I go along. I don't want to get caught up with mortgages because that's a whole lot of trouble down the road, you know, so it's just better. If the economy changes and you take a mortgage, interest rates goes up and you could be squeezed out. So I just prefer to build and own it outright. It just works out better. And that's just how we do it in the Caribbean. Most people build their houses without no <laughs> sort of loan. They pay as they go. Sometimes it could take them up to 10 years to finish, but they own it outright when they're over, when they're finished. Oh, bank nothing. That's the way to do it, absolutely. Yeah. So that was yeah. basically my questions, and I really appreciate the answers. Well, absolutely, brother. We're going to do this together as a people, um, um, and, um, and a lot of people have great ideas that make a lot of sense, and that was the biggest issue on the last project we are. We are and I, as I tell everyone, um, I'm just someone organizing things and doing the administrative part of it based on my background and based on my connections in Ghana. All of us are responsible for this input of this community. And anything that you say to me, I'm putting it together on a piece of paper, and we're at well, not a piece of paper. I'm adding it to our list of things, uh, and so on. But brother, appreciate your energy. Let me um, let me get another uh, call before we continue. Sure, sure, go ahead, man. Yes, so much. Hey, can you hear me? Uh, yes, greetings. Um. Okay, so my question has to do with the, what's the projection on them? finalizing the name, hopefully submitting that to the lawyer, to whoever get it. We're, we're trying to invest in this land. We know that we need the name for the land. So if, the, if they get the name for the land by Wednesday, what's the procedure after that? Or Then we're going to have our bylaws and everything, and then we're going to start paying for it so we can actually get our plot. 
Yeah, we right. know we're close to any plots uh, available. Right now, we're just going through information because that's the only thing that we can get because it's going to take um, the, uh, the lawyer and landowner to get all the documents together to do searches and things like that. So um, as far as the bylaws, we, we, uh, we, um, if you want to share some updates and things like that, that's uh, fine. But everything is still this in works. Um, there's really no set time we can give until all the documents are back. Um, and hopefully they're back by the next call. We have them four weeks from now. Oh, okay. That's what I was trying to see. What's the projection? Is it like a month or whatever uh, that they think that they're going to secure everything? Because you were talking about uh, more money that might be needed for the project. If they say, okay, but well, money, we need X amount of dollars, and we don't have it collected yet, or do we have it uh, in your hands so we can say, oh, yeah, go fall, go forward. You were saying something about if they ever need any more money, it can't come from you. I'm just I'm saying that I'm not accepting any more money from anyone. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, and you know, and even with the situation we talked about earlier, we're just trying to get to the point where we just take our time, get all this stuff organized, and everybody that's coming on the project sign off on it, that they agree to all of these terms and everything, and they agree okay. to the refund and the cancellation policy and everything. Uh, so. Um, we're not in a situation to accept anything because there's no documents and there's no thing, but I'm um, going to get a lawyer to create us a legal company, so it's not, you know, so it's going to be, everything will be through that company. Okay, okay, that's what I want to find out. Okay. Then, then any other ideas that people have based on, you know, what they felt like the other project could have made, worked out better, just, you know, we just got to keep on sending it and we compile it, but, um, um, you know, all of us want to get going with the building of the land and everything, but um, hopefully, literally, hopefully about five weeks from now or so, hopefully this sometime literally in the beginning of November, um, uh, we can actually move forward. But it's just so much to do, and that's all some people that, even with what Garvey Town did, you know, they, they had to do a whole lot of stuff, from, you know, to get, you know, get all that set up. And that's oh. why we always try to work with someone that has gotten all of this done before. But it's like inevitable to see that the best thing to do is to start from scratch because, you know, we we say we go try to deal with this, these other groups of folks, and then maybe the same drama. So, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah my concern was just, okay, what's the projection? If it's going to be five weeks to two months, I'm just trying to evaluate, um, making sure that I'll be there in December, uh, group. So I want to make sure I can go over oh, to December. the lake. Yeah, I'm going to December. This is Renee, and uh, I'll be there for a month. So um, I want to make sure that I can meet up with whoever it is and actually look at the land, even though we haven't acquired it, or if we have acquired it, kind of like see where it is because you've given us the coordinations of where it is. So that's why I'm asking about, okay, if, it's the, if the projection is five weeks or two months, at least we're on the way to securing it so we can be at that point of actually uh, – purchasing what we need to purchase and, and building what we need to build. Um, so, yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's the goal. It's the process to literally just get all organized, and in, in a few months we could just move forward. So, so yeah, so five weeks is, is you know, it's a good estimated time of, of trying to work to get everything done in that time frame. Okay. And then, then we need to, you know, once we get a survey also, um, you need to, you get an idea of, you know, of a nice little site plan. So for those who have, you know, experience in, in that, and while I'm talking, explain everything, family, for everybody else, if you can assist with any part of it, um, just let us know. Mm -hmm. Like, Renee, um, one of the things is I sent you the, the, chat, yeah, the new application. It's just a modified application. So if you see anything on there that we need to add or take away, let me know so we can work on building that. Okay. Uh, um, okay. So. Thanks. And then for, for others, um, if you got the background in anything in community organizing and you want to give us an idea of a site plan for, you know, basically 20 acres of land, um, all those things are needed. But, and I don't expect everyone to just want to be on a volunteer energy, but we will eventually just have committees where all of us participate. Uh, so, and because at the end of the day, that's the only way all this stuff is going to get done by us, us all participating. So Renee, appreciate that. Uh, and also, let me let me look at the questions that you sent in. And 
make sure I answered all of that on the recording. Oh, yeah. I, I just pulled it up. So. The email questions we have on our family is about the uh, application. So we have a nice uh, modified application that's ready to go. And, and you see the process as far as getting started on this document that uh, we've been sharing. I, you know, I'll talk about the voting for us to be all inclusive because these are all other people that's been with us from the beginning. And uh, I want to include them in on all the things we do. And then the other thing I talked about was assigning the, the community uh, overview and bylaws. So yeah, so I guess throughout the call I covered uh, all those things from that question. Yeah, yeah. I, I pulled it up, so I'll make sure that I take a look at it totally. All right, so, so the line is open for questions uh, based on the document that was sent. And so far, we read the first uh, three pages, or whatever the first three pages. Brother Bomani. How you doing, man? This is Paris, Atlanta. Hey. hey, greetings, brother. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Hey, I want to ask you, man, is this, a, is this a land lease also? And if so, how, how long? Uh, yes, uh, good question. It is a 50-year land lease. And then um, you'll be able to have your own uh, land indenture and document. So it's your... What we're doing is just trying to organize something where you have true, true ownership of your land. I mean, everything is a lease from here to anywhere else in the world. Uh, so, but it's your 50-year renewable with your name on it. Okay, yeah, that's what I need to know, man. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely, man. You're always welcome to come by, man, anytime you're around. Definitely, will be soon, bro. That's for sure. All right, excellent. Uh, Hello. Hi, my name is Tamika Royal from Atlanta. I um, am just getting kind of the tail end of all of this, but where can I find the information that you speak of? Is it on a website somewhere? No, it's not on a website because uh, we're in a private session right now. Uh, it's okay. uh, for those who will send the email on the email list. So uh, you can send an email to AFTA. AFTA. 2010 at MSN.com. 2010 at MSN. Okay, I'm sorry. My uncle, my uncle invited me, so I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, and wherever you got information, uh, where you got information from, Kyle, you have once you, if you received the um, the conference call link, once you open it yeah. up, all of my information is on there. Uh, what I usually do is put it in, 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 put it, put it all the way down to the bottom of the page, numbers, social okay. pages, and everything. So you can just okay. send an email with your name and your phone number, and uh, the right detail now. of what you're looking to get information on. And I can just okay. give you whatever updates we've been going over. Okay. Right? Thank but, you. Uh, but, yeah, let me know what your interest is also. Okay. Now, Sam, what is your interest? Because uh, we're talking about Ghana repatriation. You can – I'm asking that, that right now. Oh, definitely. I'm definitely looking back to go back to uh, – definitely looking back to go back to Africa. And uh, – I, I, I manage multifamily communities, so I've been managing multifamily communities for over the past 30 years. So um, my vision would be to uh, have a multifamily community, apartment community in Ghana, um, as well as a home for myself. All right, perfect. Um, um, what we're doing, this is um, a 10 to, well, this is a, the initial survey and it would be a 20-acre uh, community, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll expand from there. Um, uh, so you can you can be a part of the community and you can you know build multiple units. It's one of those situations where you know not everybody wants to build a house, and some people yeah. want to rent something. And people and that's what you're talking about, right? Being able to have something for rent or something. Yeah, maybe like a, a duplex or um, something in the multifamily community, um, and and then just something for my personal dwelling as well. All right, excellent. Uh, so that's what the community is looking to set up because that's one of the, the next set of questions that people literally had uh, was like, all right, so, so you know, we're like, we're like, what can I rent? Because uh, right. so uh, definitely want to include a few other people in that uh, in, a, in that situation as far as just people that are open to you know we, have, we probably have to just talk a lot about certain things, but once you send me an email, your number, and things, and you and I talk, we'll be able to just get Thank more. Thank you. I'm sending it now. Because what I'm literally looking to do is build up 
the document that was sent to everyone as a document that would be all inclusive of the things that we look in the bill that will make a community actually work versus like turning down people because their idea, their vision is, little, is, is to do something else. So um, mm -hmm. like the last project was that uh, the homes that were being offered was just like one style or one set and the investment situation was different. This would be your investment and that would help mm -hmm. us out to accommodate more people to live there. So great idea. Thank you. And uh, yeah, you and I would definitely talk talk because uh, we need to build a strong organized management team as far as just making this thing work. Thank you. Um, so, all right, excellent. All right, so um, it was. Let me see if I can just save your. <coughs> yeah, and I'm sending the email. the The email is uh, Tamika Relaford from the 25th Dynasty Management Company. So you'll see it in just a second. All right, perfect. And yeah, you live in the area. I uh, say so live in the area. I live right? in Atlanta. I live downtown. I live downtown Atlanta, uh, near Edgewood. All right, cool. So yeah, just over that area. So perfect. Uh, uh -huh. So um, I, you know, when you and I talk, we'll find a way to meet up, and I'll bring all of the things that we have as as far as printouts, and we can just you know, communicate, you. and I can just um, see, you know, kind of get an idea of your plan of how you want to do this mm -hmm. and things like that, and what you'd require from us to have it organized or in order. That'd be great. And I'd also like to bring, if I can get information, I'd like to uh, bring it to my investors that, you know, I manage apartment communities here, and I have investors that um, I work for, um, and I'd love to be able to bring them something that they can look at because I have told them about Ghana, but, you know, they're so busy they don't get a chance to actually just go and search out. But if I can, you know, push the information in front of them, you know, that that's be nice. And they are they are African they are African so you don't have to worry about that rule being broken. You know, I just want to get the right set of people together. It, it has worked great for the tours that we have done. I've done well, taking groups of people 16 times to, to Ghana in 12 years. It's been incredible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, so, you know, I want to offer something a little bit more because I see a lot of folks okay. like we want to like how how you know it's like how am I going to live there and things that and, and and the interests have grown like tremendous. Mhm. So, mhm. Mm Thanks. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. Take care. So, family, uh, let's uh, get one more question, and then um, I'll go to some more of the documents, and we close in about 20 minutes. All right. So, let me uh, continue. Hello. Yes. Um, give your name and uh, your question. Hello. Uh, yes. Yeah. Can you hear? Me? Yes, I can hear loud and clear live. Oh yeah. This is this is Wilbert from Orlando. All right, greetings. Uh, what's your question? Yeah. Uh, do uh, is this community going to have uh, a brick wall around it, a fence around it? Uh, are we going to have a guard gate? Will there be? And if we do, uh, will we have uh, 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 dues to pay every month to keep up the property around the entrance and stuff like that? Building um, a perimeter um, that is ideal. You know, however, it's one of those things that we have to talk about uh, in detail so we could be clear on how we're going to approach getting it done and everything. We do have to survey the area and see what would be appropriate to build in there, but at the same time, too, we're looking to get the other 30 acres of land. Uh, so, but, you know, you will have, you know, you will have orders as far as, like, the main entrance and security and things like that, but I can't say you're on a complete property yet because that property has to be opened up for us to get the rest of the land. And if we do well, then we can get the other 50, that's 100 acres of land. Uh, so, and then once, the, I guess the community is finalized, yes, we can literally secure the rest of it. Um, and, um, you, know, it, you know, you're trying to make sure everything is in, in order as far as people's safety and things like that. And, and you know, you're talking about a safe location, a safe area, but as a, for a sense of people's safety, um, the goal is to have that uh, energy around as far as people on security okay. posts and people on alert to look out for certain things. Okay. Uh, and, and also, uh, they, they, they would have to be some type of guideline as to what color you paint your house. Cause I, I wouldn't want nobody uh, on one side of me with a paint house and, and on the other side with an orange or purple or anything like that. So there will be guidelines as far as that? Uh, yes, we do have a bylaw. We do have a bylaw yeah. that's working on, on it. Uh, Sister Renee, um, would you like to share any information? Um, and then anyone from that group? 
but the goal is to, I mean, to for us to agree on certain things. So when okay. it's time for vote enough time for us to talk about it for those who are around, that's who make the decision. And just like we are going to be sending out the information for voting on the name, so all those things will be decided by a majority of people. So I okay. I've, Okay, and uh, also I just want to uh, know, I spoke to you, uh, I guess, a few weeks ago, but uh, uh, Tamika is my niece, and uh, she is good at what she do. Just wanted to throw that out there to you. And I was the one that invited her. Well, Thank you, Uncle Pedro. <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, you're in Atlanta also, right? I'm sorry, say no, again? He's in, he's, he's in Orlando, and I'm his oh, niece. Four or seven. Yeah, four is four or seven, yeah, yeah Orlando. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah, even so, that, even so, what I tell everybody, including everybody that's listening on the call, if you're ever in the area, so we can always you know, meet somewhere uh, out in town and just connect in this face-to-face -face network and things like that. So I um, made myself available you know, for this kind of work. This is what I do just throughout the whole day. Uh, Africa tours and investment all day long. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, so family, let me uh, continue with the uh, overview. So everybody is back, all on mute. All right, so um, as, as we talk about the actual land itself, uh, you're looking at um, 80 by 100, so that's 8,000 square foot of land. That's going to be setting the, the deal, what we get, and estimated cost of what we have is 1,500 per plot, plus $500, plus $500 administrative costs, and and the next 40 acres is available based on legal arrangements from landowner uh, that's being worked. So um, we're working it to where we can get the, the 20 locked down at a certain price. But after that, um, we'll let you know whatever changes as far as the price and everything. So um, it's one of those things where those who have been those who have been transferred. It's like 24 of us. Uh, so you know those plots would already be taken and then. Everybody else um, get the rest of the plots available. So um, it's a situation where once everything is clear, we just want everybody just to be clear, and then those who commit first, that's how it work, and we just keep this thing going. All right, so I'm just read through this uh, breakdown. All right, so everything is really set for one plot per person, but if you want more plot. Um, you can have another family member, 18 or older, apply and go through the application process of approval. If you want several plots for a project, uh, please send detailed email so we can work out the arrangements. Uh, so it's one of those situations where people, someone may want some land for agriculture, may want some land to do, you know, a factory or certain things, more you know, a commercial district, you know. So then we'll work that, you know, work if the deal where that's where we can just work some part of the land because it's a um, what I've been told, because my goal is to go there in December uh, when we're on tour and spend some time and do our own recordings and interview. Um, I was told, you know, sometimes you ask an estimate of land and everything, but I've told it's like close to 100 or more. And I was also told there's some mountain, you know, land available. So um, it's one of the situations where, you know, you, for the people want the land, let's literally get them the land to do what they need to do. And like, you know, like stop playing games. That's my issue with the last project we had is like all these stipulations of why you can't do this, why you can't get this. And it's like, yo, let's make this thing work. Um, you know, so you know, based on what we put together is something that, you know, we feel that will work for everyone, but we won't know if it will, will work for you unless you communicate with us. So since I haven't gotten back a whole bunch of feedback that certain things don't look good for them and I don't, or this is not clear, that I'm assuming that everybody's with it. So, yeah. so once again, family, anyone who does not have this uh, email for what I'm talking about, a draft overview, you can just email me and or I can resend email to you if you, if you, you got it and can't find it. I uh, just want as much feedback because literally if we can get you know, 70 of us to just lock down on, on that initial 20 acres, and we just build a nice little energy based on this flow of what we're talking about. That would be incredible to just open up to where we can just be a part of an investment to do it's just a whole lot of you know wonderful things. So, you know, a person that's, that's looking at it from this, a vision point of view. I build homes for rent and sale and lease. So we talk about some of this, but let me just go through this uh, in full 
um, and one of the things that's very important. So we aim to provide family homes for diaspora Africans for living or investing. This community limits restriction on different uh, types of homes you may want. The community site layout is said to have space to accommodate all sorts of building. The only situation is that we have to have a layout of the land to keep the different homes organized. We would finalize this in our bylaws group discussion and community voting. The people who are then with um, tiny homes or one floor could be on another block or area, then we could incorporate the two and three level homes uh, further back. We can also make special arrangements for those who want several plots or want to do industrial development. Then other things such as type of styles or method can be finalized by the community bylaws. This process idea is to do our best to accommodate as much of us looking to relocate or repatriate to Ghana. Uh, once land is uh, acquired, you have three to five years to start and build up to living conditions or close to complete. Uh, so these are some of the general things that we just put in there just to just give as much flexibility as possible. But part of that flexibility is saying that we're going to make sure it's organized. All right, the next thing is the uh, medical center. So it's just something that we can basically put together and just based on people with medical and, or dental background, uh, organizing a schedule that um, we can do some wonderful work in the community and also in our own community also for people who need basic, uh, you know, basic things. Uh, and then the community uh, center, another, another situation where we just set a certain uh, land aside and we work, work it out as far as we build in something that will work for all of us. So, and in that community center, for those who want to have classes, workshop, parties, social gatherings, uh, dinner gatherings, and things like that, it would just be ideal for that uh, leisure. Um, and, and there's no limitation on the things that we can organize on the land. And the other thing that uh, we can do um, you know, office building now, and that's all saying that uh, we have to get a land survey and we have to just organize where we can put certain things. Uh, and those are some of the basic uh, buildings that uh, we'll have, and, but it's mainly residential unless people have certain projects and we just organize a certain part of the, another piece of land for them, but you're still a part of the community. So I talked earlier about rites of passage and general education program. The idea of that is just reconnecting people into the African society, but also um, general education you know, from people like myself, just you know, hosting this different uh, aspects of uh, technology and different things that uh, we do. Uh, we can just you know learn from each other as a as a people, so that's what that, that's all about. Uh, and then the other thing to communal farming, so uh, it can be organized where all of us grow certain things on our own property, and we have a certain separate area also. Uh, so it's one of those things you're looking to do where you just trying to really build a true communal society where you just organize as a people, and you you know you you're cutting out certain you know certain complex of life to where you can just really just connect as a people. Uh, and we've talked about a different level of business opportunity. So it's literally um, the expansion of all the other land that I'm talking about. You know, for those who want to build big business projects, you know, it's one of those things where we can make ourselves uh, available just to organize things to you. And we just, like I said, literally just build a community together. Uh, so all those things would be neat in detail you know, writing. So, you know, we're clear that way. And the goal is to build a good relationship with the, the community and the, the people in the community. That way, we can just be able to once things get going, there's no, no there's there's no bunch of challenges to just get the next thing going and the next thing going. You know, we're gonna do some wonderful stuff. Uh, you know, even next time we go to Ghana and just try to you know, connect with the folks and you know, then when we do this initial meetings of all of the people that are part of this project. So that's another thing to organize and. Uh, you know, the goal when we all talk is to really find out more of what business is needed and how we can all just make it work. I'm proud of, you know, the energy of what we've put together and what we're building and, you know, we're going to be able to do something wonderful and special and, you know, it seems like we just got the right energy of people uh, so far. All right, I'll talk about the land administration, land administration costs and uh, building and buying homes. So that's still down to the documents. Um, you know, it's giving you the breakdown of what uh, the estimated cost of money is for. Um, 
for the land costs, uh, for administrative, and also does any other costs or land surveying or registration. So the goal is to finalize and get what's really needed as far as what's not covered um, here in writing and everything. So uh, some of these things have to be uh, updated. And we talk about uh, uh, getting started uh, with the background checks. Um, you know, uh, so everything be, you, you'd be able to just, uh, send via email. So you know, it's a, you know, it's a scan email, even the, the passport style photos that you need to first attach them to the application. And in this process, you don't need a birth certificate, but we need at least your the signature page of your passport, because uh, that's something that we can legally use. When we, have, when we have to submit documents for you uh, to get you know, certain things done for your paperwork because I want to make sure this is a nice legal process for everyone. It doesn't make no sense that we come to the country and try to dance around the laws and you know, get ourselves into a drama and get deported. You know? You know? And every time we hear about deportion, it's always you know, America deporting people back somewhere in the Caribbean or somewhere uh, to an African country. But, uh, you know, uh, now Ghana is going, going to be a, a serious organized country where they, they're looking to just deport people or just violating their laws and rules. Uh, so it's one of those things that we just let everyone know that you know, we're building a legal entity as far as the name and we're going to get everything organized. All right, cancellations and refunds. So 100% uh, refund is available by email request to cancel based on the reason. If we uh, have violated our agreement with you, we'll refund 100% of your land and administrative money. If you pay and then change your mind, we'll do our best to sell your plot and you would be refunded your land costs but not the administrative costs. In general, administrative costs is not refundable because this is the money that's being used to pay for organizing the project, which includes paying everyone and paying for all the work that needs to be done. Please be clear on all these things before you pay. So yeah, let me just trying to get us a nice overview on all these important things uh, right away. So I'm on page uh, six, and the last two, last two things we have is me membership rules and code of conduct. So those are things, honestly, you literally, you're just going to have to read through. Uh, that way we don't hold a call up for that. But all of it is based on you know, righteousness. You know, we want Righteous brothers and sisters coming together um, and we're doing our best and for people not to violate uh, you know, each other and do certain this ridiculous stuff that's just only just you know, destroy our resources to build the future for our children and the future for our people. Uh, so family, I'm going to stop right there and open up for questions. So anyone, if you have any questions, just star six to unmute yourself and then give your name. Where you're calling from and your question. All right, come on, family, and star six to unmute yourself. So, I mean, please, somebody who read the documents and have some kind of feedback want to talk about something. Other than that, we're going to close in one minute if no one has any question. And naturally, if you have to uh, speak with me privately, just call me directly or email me. It's all good. But um, I'm trying to get some recorded questions for so we can modify and edit uh, this conference call and uh, share information about us building a nice community to interest others or maybe we'll get interest from you know, some of the right people who can help us take it to another level. You just never know. Uh, anyway, family, um, star six, unmute yourself. All right, so perfect. It seems like everybody read the document all the way and everybody is fine with it. So if that's the case, that's perfect. So next uh, conference call we'll have is... October 27th, and so I'm hoping that we can talk about uh, the land documents and things like that. That way, we can literally just email everyone, and everyone can just look it over and then we'll talk about that. But that's how I got for these conference calls is, um, you know, just talk about all the things that we've been talking about um, the last four weeks and just give all the updates we can. So if anything, um, you can just always uh, listen to the recording and... We just you know, go from there, but hey, but Marty, I don't, I did not get that email. Uh, I would like to read over that as well. So, is there? Can yeah. you just email me? There? Are you, are you not? You know, you're, you're probably not on our email list. You can do the same thing like I was talking about earlier when I gave the email address. I just send an email request with those information. 
Yeah, um, if, you know, if you call me about tourist to Africa, that means you're not on the, the, the list. The only people that are on that list is people that ask me to update them on community information, and that way they can get it to be interested. So uh, just send me an email, um, and um, I'll add you to the list and everything and get you that information. You and I can talk about it. So everyone, the email that you received like today as an attached PDF. So that's what I'm explaining. The best thing for us to do, family, please, if the information interests you, please open it and read it because I'm one of the people that I answer and put everything in the email, and then I literally go over it. That way we can have a, you know, audio recording of it. But um, it's one of those things where you can, you can look it over and then you can call me back or you can email me and let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, so once again, family, everything will be sent to email. Most of the questions are things you just have to look when you get the email once the project is organized. I can't give, like I have an application, but I can't give you an application for something we don't have legal documents on and things that's finalized. I literally, I'm not rushing any of this, but literally all these things have to be done. So, you know, if you, anyone want to really help with anything, you can email me on a separate email that I would like to help or participate in certain things and be literally just, available to help with things. So that's always fine. I'd rather for you to send an email and we talk about it. Uh, there are things that people can do and you know, I'm not forcing, you know, we have a lot of people that we can do everything. So it's like a lot of things are not clear to work on at this moment. Uh, so even the committees that we're trying to organize, you know, one or two of them we have going and the rest we literally have to kind of build. It's one of those things, uh, and, but it doesn't make sense for us to finish all of this and tell everybody. Uh, so, but at the same time, we let everyone know that we're not accepting anyone's money because we need people to be clear on many things. And so, you know, so uh, use this as a foundation uh, conference for us going over this. And from there, just literally, we just keep going from there. But anyway, family, uh, let me uh, close the call and. I'll be looking out for emails and phone calls and texts and I'll keep in touch. And then the one or two updates that I have. Bomani, I'm sorry. This is Matrell. I was trying to wait to say something, but I needed to ask if we have site plans or anything that um, we wanted to propose, do you want us to send that to you via email? Because I know you get a million emails. Or is there some kind of forum where we, we should post that information? Uh, I mean, you don't have to assume that I get a lot of emails because I don't. I get emails directly for business, and those are I'm fine with going through. It's a few emails a day. It's, it's fine, and it's directly for business, so it's absolutely fine. But yeah, but um, you know, trying to find people who want to be proactive. Like I'm not forcing people to do certain things. Just looking for the the people who are like diehard ready to that can jump on something and do it, and you don't have to monitor them and things like that. Uh, so, you know, just putting that out there, I know people have to process certain things, but, you know, it's like you're trying to shield people from the foundation of something being built, you know, based on us not being able to have any input on the last project, and our input would have been vital, and that project would have been working. So this is just that process to share all the stuff, and to, for people just to say, hey, that, you know, because I know a lot of us have big resumes, but it's like, you know, I mean, it's, you know, because like right now I'm looking, I'm supposed to get some of this stuff edited and worked on, and the person that like, didn't send it in, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, it's like I don't want to have to babysit people, and you know, I mean, I got enough work and things here to do, uh, and not trying to find someone like myself, but it's, but at the same time, they're looking to find people that can say, hey, I want to do this and do it and follow through and get it done and be real about it. And that's the biggest problem I've ever had in my life, is that right there? So. I don't want to force people. That's why we collect administrative costs. So if I need to pay somebody to do anything, we'll literally pay somebody to do it. Like we'll literally pay a, a professional that can grab the community and do certain things. And more than like we'll find someone local in Ghana. Uh, but even someone giving us an example, an idea that helps to get him something. But I know those things won't be clear until we get like site plans and things like that. So a lot of work and things are going to be, going to be coming and a lot of help is going to be needed. So you can actually do that when you get the, uh, the site plan and everything. Hopefully all that is done in the next four weeks. N and not site plan, but the survey which actually locates and lay out the land. So, Michelle, Michelle, are you still there? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I heard you. I got it. I understand. All right, cool. So, you know, so absolutely appreciate it. So you're looking to volunteer for a few things. I'll definitely keep you in mind. I am. Yeah, I, I'm going to, I'm volunteering for whatever you need <laughs> to get done because I really want to get this, you know, I'm with you as far as, Let's get it going. 
exactly. All right, perfect. So for those who like email and say they want to volunteer for certain things, um, we just, uh, my goal is just to add you to our add you to our group, our WhatsApp chat, and then we can literally start discussing uh, different things we're working on, and and you know, along with committees and things like that. So perfect. So I'll be looking out for your email and anybody else's email. So absolutely, Metro, appreciate you. And also, I'm still, still around, so we, you and I have to connect, um, connect one of these days and everything. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm off on Wednesdays, so I, I can, I can come to, <laughs> down to the towards the city, or towards your way on those days. Oh, that's fine. I'm the person that okay. makes stuff available for business. All right. So, good. so yeah, look, yeah, looking forward to meeting you and I. And everybody else in the area, that's the best we can do. I don't plan on going to any other state no time soon. Um, but, you know, for those who are traveling to Ghana with me, you know, we'll meet and talk. And this is, you know, this is a priority project that, uh, you know, I'd look to just get everybody all those things I promise. And from there, I would feel like I've done a good amount of our part and that other people can literally you know, plug in and do the things they need to do and we can just make this work. So I'll keep everybody posted, family. Um, so everyone take care. Good night. Enjoy your rest of your Sunday. Good night. Peace, brother. All right. Take care.